Thank you. So I'm waiting for my slides. OK, there you go. Um, this is what I wanted to, to mention, that uh, it is an European development, and I'll talk about it. I'm um, from the University of Porto in Portugal, and I'm vice coordinator of NAP. NAP is the network of academic and professionals of Eden. And I uh, will say some words about it, because um, it's a very interesting organization. I will spend five minutes about it. Then I'll about 20 minutes for the presentation. And I hope that uh, we will have uh, time uh, for questions and discussion. Uh, of course, you place your questions in the chat area, and I'll try to uh, to answer uh, your questions. So, getting to the point of what is NAP, um, it's indeed uh, a network. So, it's a big network inside Eden or with Eden, but. It deals with persons, with those that are dedicated to online or uh, distance learning. And um, it is a place where you can um, uh, contact others and discuss issues and use also materials that are available on the blog in the Eden website. I'm currently vice chair of, the, of the, this network. Uh, the chair is uh, Professor Antonella Pocci from University of Rome, from uh, Carlo, where Carlo De Medio is also working. Um, she was supposed to do this introduction. I'm, I'm, I'm taking her, her role as uh, placing some information about uh, NAP. Uh, NAP is autonomous from Eden, let's say. It's, uh, Eden has a steering committee. Uh, and um, Eden works with the steering committee, but it has its own initiatives, and this webinar is one of them, for instance. It's one of the initiatives that the NAP has to present some subjects uh, to those that are interested. It also has a chat. Today there's a chat on by uh, Professor Antonella Pocci, if you, if you are... Uh, um, available and you want to attend, you can, uh, you can uh, participate in the Eden web chat. Um, it is for members. Uh, and um, uh, like I said, it's a, a communication forum where we, uh, the, those that are interested, as you know, there is no definition of an online professional or academic. So this is somehow uh, a guild for everyone that wants to 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 participate and discuss with their peers uh, subjects that are interesting. You have uh, placed by the Eden Secretary at the link to the Eden chat today. So and it's about the road to the next conference. So it's kind of an introduction of what's going to be. And Professor Antonio Pocci, our the chair of the NAP, will will will. Uh, coordinate that. Um, just to give you an idea of the activities of the NAP, we are planning 11 webinars this year. So as you can imagine, it's a lot of effort, it's a lot of work. Uh, people are willing to participate in the webinars. The subjects are very different. You can see it on the Eden webpage. And uh, you can also check uh, other webinars and the previous uh, Eden chats. Uh, some of them have been more active than others, but there are some interesting things. So it, it's a peer, like I said, a peer forum, a blog where you can uh, participate. And there are about uh, 1,000 of registered members. Uh, of course, there are many others that have somehow uh, participated in Indian activities, but uh, according to the Secretary General of Eden, he told me yesterday there are about 1,000 members in that. 1,000 members is a lot of members for any organization. Like I mentioned already this question of the rele relevant topics, so participate and get involved. Okay, 
so that's my introduction to NAP. I will start um, with them. Uh, let's say with um, what I think is uh, relevant for my presentation. It's this question of um, uh, the, the, the use of the Europass as an e-portfolio. And uh, these are the targeted audience, the type of people that may be interested in this development of the Europass. The Europass is not uh, a, a digital document. It's sometimes a word file or a PDF. Uh, it can be online, of course. But uh, the idea is to um, uh, advance the current Europass to a digital format and template with different uses, uses uh, and different uh, utilities, different benefits for individual end users who are the ones that will use it uh, daily or regularly. The facilitators, because they're, they're, it's intended that um, there will be facilitators uh, financed by the European Commission or by the uh, European Union uh, nations, countries, that will assist um, the individual end users to uh, improve the use of the Europass as an e-portfolio. And of course, there are the recipients like employers or uh, organizations or other uh, peers of, uh, of the persons that are uh, applying the Europass as um, an e-portfolio to receive information and process that information. These are the targeted audiences of this project. This is, like I said, a, a project from the, from the European Commission. Uh, yesterday I was in Brussels together with the Secretary General of Eden on a workshop about um, uh, how to improve uh, SME's qualifications and uh, performance using online training. And uh, the representative of uh, DG Grow from the European Commission presented precisely this Europass as one of the steps to digitalize um, the, the, the tools that are available for a, a more efficient Europe. And this project, it was subcontracted to a, to a company, Everest. It's called Europass. And it has, uh, like I mentioned, the intent of developing uh, the current uh, Europass to a digital portfolio. And it has fundamentally six tools. This will be available this year, probably after the summer. And uh, the first tool is the profile, which is the most common um, uh, known uh, usefulness of the Europass is to have a profile, is to have a, a CD where you compile and you store uh, your information about you. That's one tool that will be available. All these six tools are independent from each other and they will be available on the Europass website uh, for everyone to use. This is for free. And um, uh, the second one is online editor where you can um, use um, uh, several uh, possibilities like to create and download a CV, uh, to use um, uh, language passport so you can translate your CV in other languages, and also cover letter that will somehow um, introduce yourself and um, introduce whatever you, you, you're doing uh, in terms of, um, of uh, your uh, digital portfolio. The third uh, tool is um, Skills Profiler. It, it is a formatted, um, I, I've seen it as an example on the, on, by the, the company that is doing this subcontracting for the European Commission, and it's um, really useful. Because the point is sometimes uh, you don't know how to list your qualifications. And this skills profiler is, um, is a, uh, how do I say, a, a, a directory of the 
uh, skills uh, or better, I would prefer to call it competences because skills is uh, just one part of the competences that people have. But in any case, it, it shows your, uh, your possible um, uses of this template, this directory of the several skills either in your job or some personal skills or in terms of your attitudes, um, your autonomy, etc. It um, tries to match what you do or what you are towards an overall list of competences available for uh, several uh, profiles. So this is something that you, uh, will help everyone to define who you are, what you can do, and how you will act. Um, uh, some, most of the time, some people exaggerate, some others are very timid when they present these, um, these uh, competences of each one. But in this case, the idea is that you try to fit yourself, your profile, into a list of possible competences that are available from this skills profiler. Now, the fourth tool is where you uh, plan your future. You, you, you try what, what um, I'm an engineer. So one of the things that we do in certain professional engineer organizations and in companies, mostly companies that are interested in that, is what we call a personal development plan. So you try to identify uh, what, where do you want to be in one year? Where do you want to be in five years or twenty or ten years? And this is what uh, the Seropass tool number four will help you uh, to do that. And of course, um, this will be available for everyone. You will have control of what kind of information you will be. Uh, Furnishing to the different uh, persons that can take at your can take a look at your Europass. It's not uh, how do I say open to everyone. You have control of the access to your information, and of course, uh, this not only helps you organize your life and your work, but it will also be possible to show to other people what uh, aspirations you have, what type of. Um, uh, work you want to do, what uh, you intend to learn, uh, where you want to work, for instance, as a volunteer. It's a very broad um, uh, tool, but it will enable you to, uh, how do I say, to materialize your future. That's basically what this will do. Now, tool number five is um, a tool that where, the, the, as you have seen, one of the target audiences were the receivers, where receivers will be able to uh, place their job opportunities and with the description of the skills and competences and attitudes that they want for the, for the job offer. And you can use this tool to try to match who you are or what you want to be towards what the receivers, let's say, uh, will be willing to accept you as a future worker. Of course, in all these tools, you will have access to the second uh, targeted audience, which are the facilitators. Like I mentioned, the Europass has the intention of having uh, facilitators that will work for free, trying to, um, to help you use uh, any of these uh, six tools. The sixth uh, tool, the last one, is what you can uh, use to formalize your application and submit it. Uh, since number five will show you what is available, number six will try to fit who you are or what you want to do with what is requested from any employer or any uh, government or agency that wants to have um, a certain type of person. So these are the six tools that are scheduled for the Europass 
which as you can see is a little bit different from the current hero pass but this is what's going to happen like i mentioned in this year in a digital form um what what, what are in a nutshell what what are the functionalities of um uh, of this um, hero pass too of course it it tries to be a hub a centralized um, uh, platform where uh, both those that want to um, hire people are looking for professionals and those that are professionals and are looking for another position they will meet in this hub in this um, centralized gateway that uh, european commission wants to create like i mentioned there are these six tools that are somehow a match with some of the existing tools that um, uh, are available like the self-assessment tool which they want to use is a tool that uh, will somehow compare what you are doing and um, try to assess with evidences with uh, with uh, with uh, proof that you really have those competences like i mentioned before it's available for free so it's a it's a free uh, web uh, platform and it will be used to 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 perform these um these uh, functionalities and um like i mentioned this will not be public this is just for registered members and the registered members have uh, access to some of the advanced facilities but not to all so there will be somehow here a match between your privacy and what you want to disclose to possible employers and to other peers. Um, the conclusions, <clears throat> and that's my personal experience from what I've seen and the participation I had with the, with the, with the persons that are developing their web tool from the company's Everys. I mean, you, you can look for it, it's Everys. Uh, it's a uh, big um, company that is providing this subcontract to the European Commission. My impression is, is this is a well-rounded web tool, meaning that it's easy to use and it's um, comprehensive on one hand. And uh, on the other hand, it's um, uh, aiming at certain uh, functionalities and, uh, and uh, objectives. So uh, I think it will be... Uh, a success next year we can talk about this but uh, it's my impression the other is that um, you can disclose your qualifications either with uh, certificates or diplomas or with uh, digital badges or whatever proof of your qualifications um, and they will be recorded and displayed to those that are uh, willing to to um, present those qualifications. Um, the, the third one that I think it's very useful and it's a novelty is this support. You will have uh, facilitators to support uh, both uh, the receivers and the individual users that want to somehow to present their own uh, qualifications and their own um, uh, profiles. Um, it is intended to manage lifelong learning when you talk about lifelong learning and uh, one of the things that is uh, not usually done, it's the proper recording of your progress in terms of your qualifications. And this will somehow be a, a tool that will help you not only predict your learning in the future, but also to record what's going on and uh, at the same time to um, present the proofs uh, and the evidences that you somehow had um, uh, some, time, uh, some, some kind of uh, lifelong learning and progress in your own qualifications. Of course, this is something that it's being mentioned uh, constantly, uh, the need, especially in Europe, for the upskilling and also the reskilling. Upskilling when you need to, to improve your own qualifications and the reskilling when you have to adapt it to new situations. So basically, 
these are the conclusions and um, I would like um, uh, to uh, mention the next web chats uh, like I mentioned the road to bruises today and um, uh, another one on the 19th of June um, concerning uh, the conference about summing up the annual conference with the conclusions so this is what I wanted to, to mention today. Uh, I hope that I gave you an idea of what will be the Europass and I'm available for questions. I haven't received anything on the chat, but um, uh, feel free to present any questions and I'll try to answer as best as I can. Antonella is online, so she can, um, she can um, also talk about the NAP if needed, and uh, present uh, any answer that you may have, that you may want. And I, I'm i finished for now, so is there any questions? So Sure. It was a pleasure. If you have more questions, you can ask me or Eden Secretariat, and they will pass it on to me. Otherwise, if there are no questions. The webinar will be available, so you can um, take a look at uh, what I said and um, consult the slides also. Well, if there are no questions, I think that uh, thank you and goodbye. Sure. Okay, Matthew, see you in Bruges. Yeah. All Eden fans, good. That's very good. So I was talking to the convinced people. Thank you. Ciao. I think the Eden Secretary at uh, may now close the um, the session. I, I think the, the, the subject is simple, but um, it's, you should be looking forward.
Do I close the session or do you close the session?